Hello and welcome to a quick overview of the Creative Eye Media qualification and in particular looking at the unit R081. I'm also going to talk a little bit about my videos which cover this unit. So first of all, as a qualification this is a bit different because it is a Cambridge National qualification, not a GCSE. So it's vocational and vocational really means that it's linked more clearly to a particular work area, so in this case the um, digital media sector, and it means it's fairly practical um, but it does still have some more theoretical aspects to it like the exam. It is a level 1 slash 2 qualification which really all that means is that it's aimed at people who are between the ages of 14 and 16, so it's a GCSE level qualification. A GCSE is also a level 1 slash 2 qualification, you just don't see it written as much, that's all that means. So you can get at the end of this a, either an award or a certificate. The difference really is the size of, of, of the amount of work you're doing really. So an award is just where you take two units, so an exam and a more practical unit, which are both mandatory, so you can't choose. Whereas a certificate is a full version, where you're taking four units in total, two of which are mandatory and two of which are optional. Your teacher will be able to confirm which one of these you are doing. Likely if it is taken as an option, you'll be doing the certificate because it's a full size version. But either way, you've got to be taking the exam because it is one of the mandatory units in both of these versions. So you must take a written exam as well as at least one other more practical unit. So therefore the exam is going to be worth either 25% in the certificate or 50% in the award overall. So it's not worth a massive amount, but it's worth enough that you've got to focus on it and prepare for it adequately. Okay, so looking at this exam in particular, it's got the unit code R081 and the name is pre-production skills. So this exam will last for 1 hour 15 minutes and it will be worth 60 marks in total. And you can sit this exam in either the winter or summer exam series. So your teacher will be able to confirm exactly how they are going to approach this. You might take it in say winter year 11 and summer year 11. You might do it in summer year 10 and then winter year 11. It depends what your teacher thinks is best. And you are allowed to take this exam twice, as I kind of implied by the previous point. So you can take it twice, you can resit it if you feel it hasn't gone so well. Again, some teachers might not um, give you an opportunity to resit it. They might assume you've only got one chance to do it. It's kind of up to the teacher. In terms of the content of this, we'll look in a minute at the specification on the exam board's website. But I think some people have a false notion that because this is a vocational course, it's very practical. You can just walk in and just do the exam without much preparation. Actually, there are quite a lot of questions, usually short mark questions between one and four marks, asking you about theory behind a lot of these pre-production skills. So you have got to revise and learn for these questions. There are some longer mark questions which are more practical, where you are asked to create a pre-production document, in a rough version at least, and annotate it. So this is fairly practical, but you still have to prepare for it and learn the content and learn the theory behind each of those documents. You usually get two of these questions in the exam paper worth usually between seven and 10 marks. And probably the longest mark question in the paper will be a question asking you to evaluate somebody else's pre-production document. So strengths, weaknesses, and so on. Again, this does require you to have understood and have learned theory behind it. So make sure you are preparing for this exam like any other. Don't just assume it's totally practical because actually it's not. Okay, so because this course is different to GCSEs, despite being equivalent in worth, it has a different grading system to the numbers you might be more used to. So this table gives you a rough comparison of the difference between Cambridge Nationals and GCSE grades. You can see in Creative Eye Media we're using a grading system mostly based around pass, merit and distinction, where distinction is better than pass. But you can see we've got different levels and so level two is better than level one occasionally i've given out results for homework or for mock papers and given a level one distinction which sometimes people get quite excited about but actually level one distinction is not as good as say a level two pass so the level is more important here but then you go into pass mark distinction and also distinction start at the very top in terms of the marks you'll need to get those grades it will change every exam series because some exam papers are harder than others and they adjust it slightly. To find the latest, you just have to search for Cambridge Nationals grade boundaries for a particular year and you can find the latest. But here on the table in pink are the rough boundaries the exam board have set. So you can see for distinction start at level two, you can only drop six marks out of 60 to get the highest grade. So really it's quite tight. You cannot be affording to drop too many marks, which again makes it really important to revise carefully and thoroughly. If you search for Creative Eye Media and go onto OCR's website, you can find a lot of useful information, including my specification. So the specification is 
what document OCR of exam would have produced to help teachers. It's quite a daunting document, but what is useful about it is it does tell you exactly what is needed for the exam and for other units as well. So if you go down and click on unit R081, you can see all of the content the exam would have set, which you need to learn for this exam. And it's possibly more than you realize, because actually, like I say, a lot of people expect it to be, I think, easier than it, it may turn out to be. Going back to the main web page, if you look, go over to assessment, you've got, thankfully, loads and loads of past papers to practice. This course has been around quite a while. You've got loads of past papers to practice, and it's really important to revise by trying these past papers and then marking it as well. And also to hopefully help support your preparation, I've made a set of videos which covers all the content required for this exam unit. So what I've done is just gone through the specification and made sure I've covered all of the content, not always in the same order, because the order is a little bit strange, uh, but I've covered it all in, in a better order, in my opinion, and it covers all the content you need to know for the exam. So hopefully that will help. Also, I've done a past paper walkthrough of a June 2018 exam, which will show you the structure and also show you how to answer certain questions, which may be useful as well. All of this will be linked in the description. And feel free to ask any questions in the comment section of any of these videos, and I'll try and get back to you. Otherwise, I wish you the best of luck.